So, a uh, warm welcome to uh, Karolinska Institute to Stockholm. It's great to see you here from uh, five different continents as far as I understand. And I also understand that you are a very closely knit international network of experts in this field and that you meet regularly more or less. And um, I was just told that the next meeting will be in Colombia in, uh, in Cali. So, uh, already in July. Yes. So, uh, I'm very pleased to see such an engaged scientific community in this very, very important field. And um, as you said, I've had the opportunity to go through the uh, actual evidence, the figures, and uh, the progress is not perhaps what we hope for. And uh, as you say, you should know. Really depend on prayers, but on evidence, and as we discussed uh, just prior to, to the meeting, perhaps on more passion for this uh, very, very important task of using death on the relics. And um, I must confess <laughs> that I'm not uh, myself an expert in this field, now this doesn't work. What is going on here? See, perhaps you have to do this. Now it's working. How long is going on? That was not a good start. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was not something. <laughs> okay, now we are in a better shape. Um, I must confess, I'm not uh, an expert in this field, far from it. But uh, I dare say I can follow the debate that is going on also here in Sweden. And Marie, you're coming back to this. Uh, what is the uh, talk of the town now in Stockholm, given this uh, conference that will be <coughs> from tomorrow? Well, this is. Uh, how many of you understand Swedish? Mm. <laughs> oh, okay, a minority. But uh, this is in fact an article published. Uh, Friday, I think, on this very topic that we're discussing today in uh, one of the leading newspapers of Sweden. And uh, it goes back to the uh, zero mission, mission zero, that uh, is more or less the backdrop of the discussion today. And in this article, they state that, uh, well, we have to reduce speed, the speed limit to 20 kilometers an hour to be close to mission zero. We can uh, discuss whether that is uh, practically possible. But anyway, there is a discussion going on in Sweden as we speak on this very issue. That is the uh, starting point for the meeting today. Much is going on when it comes to um, science and research within this field in Sweden. I'm proud that uh, we are engaged in this very topic here at Karin Institute, but also older universities, obviously in Sweden, are very much interested in uh, paving the way for an increased flow of safety safety to, to research and uh, new evidence. And uh, we also have, in fact, representatives from all the Nordic countries here, so uh, that's great. Um, this is Mr. House. In fact, last week, I was at a meeting where Road safety was a major issue. We were, this looks like Hogwarts or whatever. <laughs> but uh, in this very place, there was a very interesting discussion on road safety in an agenda 2030 context. So uh, it's very clear, it's quite clear that uh, this issue is an important one worldwide. Road safety and agenda 2030. Well, as we um, just said, um, accidents on the roads take a great toll on society, on humanity, I would say. And uh, we are very, very far from uh, the zero condition of mission zero. And uh, one of the issues that struck me when I went through this data just prior to this meeting is the last bullet point here that 90% of road traffic that occurred in low and mid income countries. 
despite the fact, if I understand it correctly, that uh, only 60% or 63% of the world's cars are found in these very countries. So there is an enormous disparity between different countries when it comes to the toll that accidents take on the societies and humanity. And uh, of course the backdrop for this meeting is very much the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, there are two goals in particular, as we know, that uh, address the issue of uh, road safety. And that is goal three, which is of course very important goal for Conrad's Institute being a medical university, and also uh, goal 11. So these goals are very much in evidence in any discussion of road safety, obviously. But, as we all know, if we really go into more details, the issue that we discuss today extends into so many different goals, not only 11 and 3. So we are looking at a very complex issue that can only be addressed if we really bring different sectors together in a seamless manner. So, um, what is important, of course, is to see road safety in the context of the other goals, in the context of uh, not only health, but energy, infrastructure and cities, human settlements, as it says here, and climate change. And uh, the discussion that we had uh, just prior to the meeting also tells us that uh, we had to look even more intensively into the pollutants that uh, we uh, see are being produced by the enormous uh, number of vehicles that we have on the roads. Um, my interest in this field is very much inspired by uh, the cross-sectoral thinking that we have to apply across all fields now when uh, we are approaching and transgressing the planetary boundaries. I myself was chairing a large commission a while ago on uh, cross-sectoral thinking when it comes to health, not so much devoted to road safety and mm -hmm. other health issues. And uh, I, I dare say that when I look at the program and then also the program for tomorrow, I see that many different <laughs> sectors are coming together to address uh, this very important issue. And that is necessary because road safety is certainly a, a cross-sectoral responsibility. So, evidence-based multi-sector solutions are urgently needed, certainly. And um, as I said, we have to look also at inequity, the disparity between different countries. And uh, also, of course, we have to look uh, at something that is very close to my field, uh, behavioral ch changes that are required to improve the situation at hand. One of the things that um, really struck me uh, in the meeting that I just referred to is uh, how we design cities. And of course this is well known to you, but this story I find particularly interesting how uh, in many cities, this is uh, from times to very new, there is again this tremendous disparity between the space allocated to the pedestrians and the space allocated to cars. So, uh, if I understood uh, this correctly, Jeff uh, Rison was uh, telling me about this, that uh, Times Square, at this point in time, the 90% of the people were pedestrians, 10% car, but 90% of the space was allocated to cars. Well, that's what we could call perhaps certain values. So, I uh, understand that uh, great strides have been taken, not only in Times Square, but in many other parts. Uh, world in urban areas to come up with a more proportional share distribution of space between pedestrians and cars. And I think this is a very, very important thing for the future. And I should also hope that Stockholm would perhaps redesign some of its streets and spaces to allow for a more proportional share of space between pedestrians and, uh, and uh, car traffic. I myself being a very avid pedestrian and really look forward to this. Uh, car safety, of course, is important. I won't go into this, but uh, David Ward, whom we discussed uh, prior to the meeting, uh, he uh, gave a lecture that I attended last week. I hope uh, the healthy competition 
for better record safety will continue. Because, as we said, there is certainly a need for improvement. I think these figures are so striking that uh, when you look at the disease burden, the burden of disease globally, these are figures that are well known to you, I'm sure. There is certainly a reduction worldwide when it comes to death from injuries. But if you look at the breakdown here, you will see that uh, drowning is certainly accident that is on the decline, but not so for road injuries as that was that you see at the bottom here. More or less the same toll on society now <coughs> that we saw in 1990. Progress needs to go faster. And uh, there's certainly way, there is certainly a long way to go until we meet the SDG target to the policies, halving, halving global growth deaths by 2020. So uh, progress must be possible. Uh, disparity between countries and uh, parts of the world. Uh, this is also a very striking uh, graph telling us that uh, there are enormous inequities between different parts of the world. And uh, even within Europe, enormous differences, as you can see here. And, uh, well, Sweden, Norway, yeah, in a pretty good situation, but still far away from ambition. So, uh, being a scientist myself, I would say that um, evidence is required to save more lives, obviously, research is required. But uh, we also need other elements, as we said, passion, obviously, a societal engagement for this particular issue. We need leadership, we need infrastructure design, safety standards, obviously, and uh, enforcement of traffic laws. All these issues are well known to you. And I think every discussion on uh, Mission Zero has to encompass all these different aspects and all these different types of expertise. In the Lancet Commission that I was chairing, we uh, thought that perhaps we should have a society with the multi-stakeholder platforms addressing the important the society needs and important societal challenges. So uh, we should perhaps bring different actors together in a much more efficient way to address these particular needs. And what about education? Uh, at Korea's Institute, uh, we want to instill a much better understanding of this challenge and all the challenges impacting us in our students. And uh, we would like to rethink higher education in the perspective of the uh, sustainable development goals. This is what I mean we have last year with more than 500 students from all over Sweden uh, discussing health in the context of uh, the sustainable development goals. So finally, we have a new uh, strategy for the Institute. Uh, we want to be groundbreaking, obviously, in our research. We want to act and think globally, as we are doing in this particular session. And not least, we want to be an engaged university. And that means not only to provide evidence and research, but also see to it that research and evidence are implemented in practice and in policies. That is also an important task, as I see it, of the papers. Thank you very much for uh, your attention. I wish you all the best for the next meeting. And uh, now, with the sun coming up, and we know now, uh, with the safe driving in Stockholm, mm -hmm. I think everything is in place for the discussion. Thank you for your